Sure. Um, Sudan is, is, is the most high-profile case, right. uh, obviously, and, and one that gives the title to the film, A Reckoning. Um, but there are, there are other cases going. Uh, one is in northern Uganda, um, and, and its, uh, its neighbors, the case of Lord's Resistance Army, the LRA, uh, which is a uh, militia responsible for widespread crimes against humanity over a long period of time. Uh, and that was the court's first investigation. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's issued arrest warrants. Uh, those warrants have, have not been executed. Um, although the, the process, the ICC itself, the introduction of that uh, accountability and the threat of international prosecution was by many analysts, including myself, uh, a, a, a major factor in pushing the LRA to the negotiating table mm -hmm. uh, in, in what unfortunately was a, a failed attempt to broker a peace deal. Um, uh, another case that's open is the, the case in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, um, and specifically focusing in on, uh, up until now, crimes committed during the Civil War in an area called Ituri. Um, and that is where uh, the Congolese government has handed over one of the suspects. Um, there were, uh, as the film pointed out, some, some legal uh, wranglings to deal with, um, and uh, it appears the court uh, worked through those uh, in, you know, it, in due process and, and, and got to the right outcome and now that, that trial um, is on track. Uh, and the other case is in the Central of African Republic. Um, and as a result of that case, a former Congolese rebel leader who was using Central Africa as a, as a rear base and, and, and gathering support from the, the former regime in, in CAR mm -hmm. um, uh, was arrested and transferred to The Hague. Um, and uh, another trial uh, that, is, that is on track. And, and one thing I think that's been missing somewhat from, um, from the overall analysis of the court is really looking at the way in which the court is now actively involved in, in, a, in a web, a conflict system, a cycle of conflicts that are all interconnected. True. Um, right. the, the LRA, mm -hmm. uh, a, a cross-border rebel group that's now operating principally in, in Eastern Congo, mm -hmm. uh, where there is an investigation ongoing into another conflict. Uh, the, the CAR investigation leading to the arrest of a Congolese rebel leader, a rebel leader who had been backed by the Ugandan government. Uh, the LRA also having been backed by the Sudanese government uh, during its 20-year during its, uh, uh, reign of terror. Uh, and so the, the, the interconnectedness between these conflicts is something that I think from, a, from, a, um, from the perspective of, of international justice, um, you know, looking at, at this system from a more holistic, more comprehensive way and looking at who are the key players in really driving conflict in the region is something that um, the ICC is, I think, necessarily moving toward mm -hmm. in the future. Great. I think it's um, interesting to see that one of the main criticisms that we always he we're hearing all the time is that the ICC only focuses on Africa. You hear um, that was actually one of the main criticisms voiced at the African Union summit. Right. And I think that um, something that's really not well understood is that in fact the ICC isn't is investigating is in its analysis phase, mm -hmm. sure. so-called, um, in a number of other regions of the world. So could you talk a little bit about that? I think that's just not very well known. Yeah, the, the, the court has, has taken, um, has been criticized as, as becoming the International Criminal Court for Africa. Right. Um, and I, I think that criticism is, is unfair. Um, first of all, the, the cases that are ongoing um, on the continent, um, three of the four were uh, invited by the countries themselves. Mm -hmm. The investigations were, uh, uh, were begun as a result of the Ugandan government, the Congolese government, and the government of the Central African Republic actually asking the court to come in and to step in and, and take that role. Uh, now, you can argue what ulterior motives various leaders might have had in doing so, but um, the, the, to argue that, 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 in fact, the court is targeting Africa when, in fact, these were invitations is, is just patently absurd. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the case of Sudan, you know, this was, uh, Sudan is not a state party. Sudan obviously would not invite the ICC to investigate, but this was, you know, as we saw in the film, this was the result of, you know, this was the Security Council. Uh, this was the decision by uh, uh, the, the Permanent Five uh, to, to refer uh, this case to the ICC. And given uh, the alliance with, between China and uh, Sudan, 
uh, given the United States' close cooperation on counterterrorism issues with Sudan, uh, it, you know, the, the, the fact that the Security Council referred this case uh, suggests that there is, and there is, overwhelming evidence that uh, the Sudanese government has been involved in, in crimes against humanity. Um, and beyond that, you know, the, the, these are, in fact, some of the deadliest conflicts in the world. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to be honest about the fact that although uh, President Obama was absolutely right in his speech in Ghana in saying that, that the caricature of Africa as, as chronic conflict uh, is not true, we have to also acknowledge that some of the worst, deadliest conflicts are, in fact, taking place on the continent. Okay. That said, um, the court is also pursuing uh, is actively looking at other conflicts. Uh, Colombia was one uh, from the film uh, that it was interesting. The way that you know that we're seeing the court in a way playing a monitoring role in Colombia, a justice system that's clearly capable of addressing uh, those uh, war criminals inside Colombia and dealing with them domestically. Uh, the question is, is the political will there, and that's something that the court is seeking to uh, uh, foster. Uh, the court's also looking into um, the actions in Gaza during the recent uh, incursion, Israeli incursion into the Gaza Strip. Um, the court frequently uh, takes uh, uh, criticism for not uh, spending time looking at the, the issue of Israel-Palestine. Mm -hmm. uh, justifiably, there are crimes against humanity committed uh, in that part of the world regularly. Um, but the court is looking into it, um, and I think that has to be acknowledged. The, the difficulties of actually launching an investigation uh, are significant. Mm -hmm. um, but there. And, you know, to, to close on that question, I, I think we also, you know, the, I would not be surprised if we saw more investigations in Africa. Um, you know, the, the current uh, conflict in, in the Horn of Africa, in Somalia, is mm -hmm. one that is desperately calling out for some measure of accountability. Now, whether that's through the International Criminal Court or some other body, I don't know. But Somalia is an accountability-free zone. And the atrocities committed there, uh, the, the alarming, appalling atrocities that have been committed there uh, during the last two and a half years, uh, criminals need to be held to account for what they've done. And, and, and the Somali, uh, the lack of government means that the, the responsibility to hold those to account is probably going to fall elsewhere. Mm -hmm. When in fact, um, I think it was last week even, the United Nations um, mentioned that in fact war crimes very well may be com committed in Somalia, being committed right now in Somalia, and I think that having that body come out with such strong words, um, I think it indicates that you're, you're very, you're very yeah. right that, that we're going to see this. It, it's a signal that, that I, I think for the council, and this is, I think, the case with Darfur, that the, the evidence of, of crimes against humanity and war crimes is so overwhelming mm -hmm. that they simply can't stay yeah. silent. Um, and uh, the need to begin to address uh, impunity as a, as a way to end what is one of the most intractable conflicts in the world um, is, is a, a role that the international community can and should play. Mm -hmm. Okay, I wanted to shift gears a little bit and just talk about the U.S. involvement a little bit because I think that one thing that the film brings up, of course, is you see um, you see various members of the U.S. administration um, involved in the negotiations for the Rome Statute mm -hmm. and then, um, of course, Bush administration rejecting it ultimately. Um, but I also think that one, one question that we're often hearing is, well, and it, it, it feeds into why the U.S. decided not to, or unsign the Rome Statute, was concern over uh, U.S. officials being, the, uh, the ICC investigating U.S. officials. And so I think, mm -hmm. um, in particular, if we're, seeing, if we're seeing questions about the previous administration and these ramifications for using torture and violating the G Geneva Convention. So I think it would be interesting if you could talk about why, or. What, how likely it is that the ICC would look at crimes committed by U.S. officials? 